Marshall Wright arrived from Cincinnati into Los Angeles with acting ambitions, seeking to be cast in the film Golden Boy. His sole credential, he confessed, was that he had fought former heavyweight champion Ezard Charles once and lost. He would not be cast for the role, but his affinity for boxers and wrestlers remained lifelong. He managed the Cauliflower Alley Club and Hollywood Appreciation Society. The two groups celebrated former champions, contenders, film and movie performers, and even outsiders who remembered when these people were once important. The majority had fallen into permanent obscurity, alcoholism, and the worst malady of all, no longer relevant. Marshall had known many celebrities when their careers flourished. He still remembered and kept in contact with those who'd since hit bottom. His own life and professional career mirrored theirs. He had managed notable hotel properties in Miami Beach, Mexico, and Havana. He operated the Coconut Grove at the Ambassador Hotel in Los Angeles and opened the Riviera and Flamingo Hotel in Las Vegas. He was well acquainted with celebrities and insider gossip. He created his own while dating Marilyn Monroe. He never boasted about who he once had known or the extent of his exploits. I viewed enough of his photographs and met these individuals through him to confirm that his stories were genuine. He always maintained that a hotel manager would never write a tell-all book, even if they knew sufficient secrets, and they do. After his Las Vegas stint, he was considered tainted within the hotel industry due to his private hotel's mob ownership. He insisted that the mob kept hotel operations separate from illegal activities. Who knows? His subsequent hotel properties continued to minimize in stature and importance. I encountered him at his final property in Burbank where I managed the Chamber of Commerce and he the Golden State Hotel. Once the hotel converted to a Ramada Inn, his reputation didn't conform to the fresh identity. He drifted to Guadalajara, then Las Vegas following the death of his wife, and finally Bunker Hill in downtown Los Angeles. We maintained periodic contact, and I assisted him minimally with his unfinished book project. He envisioned having his manuscript published regarding the history of downtown Los Angeles. He attempted to find a university press publisher. I joined him at one session in Las Vegas. He wanted full editorial control from them and to include his hand-drawn illustrations. There was no follow-up interest to publish. Marshall drifted through the cracks and died in his 80s. He was an eyewitness to the polemics of fame and success. I learned more viewing the downward trajectory with a sense of perspective that I've never forgotten. I will never forget the dignity and candor of Marshall Wright, either. <laughs>